take this, throw it off, take it, and throw it away. All right, everyone, welcome back here to the channel and uh, another video. So let me get in the car, the AC going, cause uh, man, it's it's warm. It's got a it's got a hot start, cause I just got home from work. This time of year in Texas, you are thankful <laughs> for cooled seats, and it's only only gonna get hotter. All right, everyone, hope you guys are having a blessed day and a early start to your Memorial Day weekend. Um, I wanted to put out this video today based upon, I was, obviously, as you can see in the title and the thumbnail, I've seen a lot of people on social media commenting, people who just bought a car, I obviously, a Mustang, S550 particularly, they just buy it and they don't know, obviously, where to start. Not as bad as the people that comment asking what kind of oil to stick in your car. Every time I see the comments of people asking what kind of oil they should use in their car, I always comment first things first. I always, I always recommend olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. You can't go wrong. So I had a list. I'll go out and I'll walk around. I'll point it out and stuff like that. I'm just in the car now. I'm just getting the AC going because it's a bit warm. Um, five mods that you can get for your s550 under twelve hundred dollars um if i would have made this video probably six months ago it probably would have been five mods the same mods for under a thousand but obviously inflation everything going up uh six months from now that would probably be the same mods under 1500 but anyway you guys get the idea all right so first things first if you bought the car brand new specifically a 2018 on up right after you sign the paperwork or how like even before uh take this throw it off take it and throw it away honestly though i've had this off for a while i honestly don't know why ford thought this design was good but i just <laughs> use that as an example i'm gonna hang it up eventually but it's just it's ugly it's massive and it's just not a good look all right, so first things first, since we're here obviously under the hood, I'm gonna say the first thing that anybody should get is a catch can. If you buy one used, hopefully it has one, right after you take off that massive surfboard and throw it away, pick up like a JLT catch can. It's probably one of the cheapest options that you could go with and it can preserve the longevity of your engine by simply adding the passenger side oil catch can. JLT is 150, 175 bucks, somewhere around there. You don't necessarily need the driver's side. I recommend definitely first thing that anyone should do, picking up a catch can. Especially if you do a lot of like drag racing and road racing trips like Tijuana, like I do. Should be something anyone should get. I should have that, that's something I don't have. Uh, especially like I said, if you beat on the car, catch can. All right, and secondly is what is propping up the hood. And that is this guy right here. The factory prop rod for the hood. I honestly don't know why they just now installed from the factory hydraulic hood struts. Um, this is something that should have came from the factory and to Replace those and add those as another cheap option. You're probably looking at maybe around $80 for a pair. So you're looking at under $100 to have the hood just be something that should have been from the factory. Now, if you get those, I would recommend still keeping this as a backup in case they go out or if you're at a car show or an event and it's a gust of wind or someone bumps the hood, it can close on you or they can break whatever. I recommend still probably keeping that as a backup. Ford, come on, I don't know what took you guys so long, but finally on the S650s, you guys have them from the factory. So about 80 bucks for the factory hood struts. And then you're looking at about 
150 to 175 so far for oil catch can. Another route to go, which there's a lot of options, is this right here, colder intake. Now, I decided to go with the Corsa and this specific one before I got my tune, and I got this one specifically because you can throw this on here and you don't need to get a tune. A tune is not required when adding this specific intake because the piping is all the same factor size. So it's not larger, so it did not require an aftermarket tune. I did that because I saw Xander 13 before he went with his ESS kit. He had this exact same kit, except it was all carbon fiber here. I didn't want to go that route, spend literally twice the amount for just a carbon fiber tube. But you're probably looking about 350 bucks for a colder intake that does not require a tune. Now, once you do have a tune, you can gain power off of that, obviously. But 22s on up, 22s and 23s are reduced in horsepower. So by putting that on, you gain back that lost power because the factory intake has those carbon air traps. So you get rid of the intake, you get rid of the carbon air traps, and you can gain back the factory power that was lost and then a, a little bit extra on top of that without a tune. All right, and then the fourth option, I would say lowering spring. You could go with, there's a, a number of options to go with. I went with the iBox Sport Lines. It is the more aggressive of the two. You have the Sport Lines and the Pro Kit. The Sport Lines, comparing the two, is the most aggressive drop. I don't know exactly how much the Pro Kits drop it, but it's not as much as this right here. The ride quality is good. The price of these, you're looking at probably right around the 350 price range. Get them installed, get in alignment. The alignment doesn't cost a whole lot. And I would get some camber bolts to help adjust the camber in the front along with an alignment. In my opinion, the stance on these is perfect. It's the perfect drop. You need to be careful if you get like an aftermarket whip. That can obviously become a problem. I don't have that yet. I don't really have a lot of issues scraping with speed bumps because I've had a lot of experience with lowered cars. But the iBox Sport lines are looking at right around 350, as I said. You know, they got the Steedas and other options too, but I'm using mine as an example because obviously that's what I got. Another one I want to point out that is not that expensive is this right here. Now I have the 22 Premium. The spoiler that came on the Premium I don't think I have it anymore. Yeah, I threw it away. Just to show you, but if you have these cars and you had a premium, you know the factory spoiler on these are, I wouldn't even call them a spoiler. They're small, it's tiny, it's like a lip on the trunk lid. I got the GE500 spoiler here. It's, how much was that? It was less than 300 bucks. Now you could get the same option with the gurney flap, it screws in here on the back of it. I didn't want any of that because it adds extra downforce and other kind of stuff. That's good for like going to the track and stuff like that and road course, all that kind of stuff. But I didn't want that. It's not something that was important to me. I was more interested in just getting rid of that factory spoiler, which is in my opinion, complete dog water. It's not even a good option or like a good excuse of a spoiler. Now, if you have the performance pack and you get the performance pack spoiler, my opinion, keep it. That's a good spoiler, but I didn't have that. I went GT500. I still think this is a better looking spoiler compared to the, the performance pack, but if you got the performance pack spoiler, there's no need to change that out. It's a good look. So all those five options pointed out, as of now in May, 2024, you're just under 1200 bucks. Um, it's not that expensive and it makes the car look and make it the colder intake, add like a little extra power. Just the overall feel, the look, the presence of the car for 1200 bucks, in my opinion, it's money well spent. Now there's other options that you could do if you don't have the like the night pony package, which this car is for not that expensive. I don't really know how much it would be, but I'm assuming a few hundred bucks, you could wrap the roof black. Uh, you get the mirror caps blacked out, which mine came that way from the factory, but I'm just using it as an additional option. You could black out the mirror caps, the roof. You could black out the spoiler. God, it's 
only May. And we're gonna, in July and August, it's gonna make 90 feel like a cold day. So I wanna get back in here. It is uh, just, man, it's, it's getting hot. So anyway, hope that might help some of you that's not sure on what to start with mod wise. If you just want some cheap options to start with that in my opinion, make a drastic, not hit anything, back up. That's close. But there are options in my opinion that can drastically change the overall appearance and look of the car and the functionality, which, you know, you got the hood struts, which should have been away from the factory oil catch can, which is probably the most practical and probably should be the first thing that anyone should probably put on their car. Lowering springs, lots of options. Factory spoiler, depending on what trim that you have. And the colder intake. The colder intake, the option I did, it did not require a tune, so that's why I went that route. Now, if you went with a bigger inlet, obviously it's gonna require a tune, but if you're looking to spend a certain amount under, said 1,200 bucks, 1,000 bucks, that colder intake, like I said, won't require a tune. You throw in a tune, you're probably adding an extra seven, eight hundred bucks on top of all of that because tunes uh, aren't that cheap compared to the options that I listed. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna wrap this one up. If you're not subscribed, please do me a favor, hit subscribe. If you didn't catch the last video I uploaded, I'm gonna put a card to that right up here. We made a trip down to Tijuana. Gen 3 versus Gen 2. I'm going to be doing another trip to Mexico here shortly. A certain person that has been on the channel before has finally gotten his E85 tune. We're going to go help him upload his tune, get his gas jugs, dial that in, hit some trips down to Mexico doing some test hits, and then him and I are going to compare his tune and my tune. And if anybody else is watching that wants to make a couple trips down to Mexico, uh, hit me up. I'm always down for a good time. So you guys have a good one. Make sure you hit subscribe. I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.